Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, Jennifer, for the invitation, uh, as well as the Center for Latin American Studies here and the uh, virtual dialogues program. So I'm very happy to be here. And I'm happy to join Rafael Loaiza, who I have not seen in many years uh, since I gave a talk in his class uh, five or six years ago, as I recall. So it's good to see you again, uh, uh, Rafael. Um, so um, as Jennifer was saying, um, Evo Morales, in many ways, can lay claim to being the most popular president in recent Bolivian history. Uh, he has already triumphed by resounding margins in two elections. Uh, he stands well positioned to win a third later this year. His approval rating uh, is currently quite high, significantly higher than his closest competitors. Uh, and he consistently fares better than other members of his party uh, in elections. Uh, so this is a, this is a president who, who is really uh, quite, quite popular. Um, and his, his rise to power is stunning considering that he comes from very humble origins, right? Uh, so he grew up poor. Uh, he grew up in a rural area later migrates uh, to the coca growing leaders and rises, uh, rises through the coca uh, growing unions. Um, I argued uh, in my book and elsewhere that his stunning rise to power is in large part a result of his ethno-populist strategy. Um, and this ethno-populist strategy, argue, has an, uh, I argue, has enabled him to fuse together an electoral coalition of rural indigenous people and urban mestizos. So this is not a politician that has relied solely on the support of the indigenous people. Okay. He has also won significant support from among mestizos. Uh, and, and this is what uh, has propelled him to, to the presidency. Um, I, I would also argue uh, that in office, he has also pursued an ethno-populist strategy. Okay? So this wasn't just a campaign strategy. This is also a governing strategy. And this governing strategy has enabled him to consolidate his power uh, and his base of uh, electoral support. Uh, so let me start by explaining what I mean uh, by this. What is an ethno-populist strategy, uh, et cetera. Uh, then I'll discuss his policies that he's implemented in office and how they have reflected this ethno-populist strategy. Uh, and I'll conclude by offering an overall assessment of his policies, of the policies he's implemented in his first year <coughs> administrations. Uh, uh, so let me first start with, with the ethno-populist uh, strategy. So one important part uh, of an ethno-populist ethno strategy <coughs> is making ethno ethnic appeals, okay. uh, is mobilizing the base, winning support among the indigenous population. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Evo has done this uh, through a number of ways. Uh, first of all, it's important the fact that he is a self-identified indigenous person. And I would even go further than Jennifer would to uh, the point that he was the first indigenous president of Bolivia, which is true. I would go even further and say he's the first self-identified indigenous president in Latin America. There have certainly been other presidents of indigenous descent in the region, Alejandro Torero in Peru, Benito Juarez in Mexico, but Evo is the first one to really embrace that identity and make it a key part of his uh, public persona to identify as indigenous. Uh, um, so he you know, is very much a symbol of indigenous progress, a symbol of ethnic pride in the region. Um, indigenous people in Latin America and Bolivia in particular uh, have long been politically and, and socioeconomically marginalized. Uh, the traditional parties rarely recruited indigenous people uh, to, as candidates for higher office or to serve in the governments that they headed. Uh, so the election of Morales represents a real breakthrough. And this is something truly important. Um, moreover, 
Evo Morales is not only an indigenous person himself, he's someone that emerged from the indigenous movement, who has close ties to indigenous organizations and leaders. Uh, the Coconut Grove <coughs> Unions, uh, which he led, are indigenous in the sense that they comprise indigenous people. Uh, they're all, virtually all, either Quechua speaker or not speaking uh, uh, people. Uh, and while they didn't initially embrace a great number of ethnic groups, they grew uh, to embrace those ethnic groups. Uh, so Evo Morales uh, has continued to maintain those close ties. Now that doesn't mean that everybody who's indigenous or the entire indigenous movement supports him. In fact, some indigenous leaders have broken with him. Uh, he's expelled some of them. Uh, he has rocky relations with them some indigenous organizations, but the vast majority of the indigenous movement, uh, indigenous leaders continue to support them. Um, it's also the case that Evel has really adopted many traditional indigenous domains. Uh, so things like agrarian reform, Evel advocated, uh, indigenous land and water rights, intercultural education, all of these uh, were part of Evel's platform. Uh, and helped him win support among indigenous people. But it's important to recognize that this was only one component of his platform, of his campaign strategy. That from the beginning, Evo sought support not just among indigenous people, but also among whites and mestizos, okay? particularly mestizos. Uh, and for that reason, he has avoided exclusionary rhetoric. Uh, he has emphasized the inclusive nature of his political project. He has recruited numerous white and mestizo leaders to his party. And he has aggressively sought the support of non-indigenous organizations, not just indigenous organizations. And populism, traditional populist appeals, have been a key component of Morales' effort to move the support of Bolivians of all ethnicities, not just indigenous people, because indigenous people have also been attracted by these populist appeals, but also to reach out to whites and mestizos in Bolivia. Um, and what do I mean by populist appeals? Um, well, uh, my the definition of populism focuses on personalism, anti-establishment, uh, rhetoric and nationalist and state interventionist uh, appeals. Uh, so let me talk about each one of those. Um, uh, so first of all, personalism. Uh, populist movements tend to be highly personalistic. The Movimiento Socialismo in Bolivia has been no exception. Uh, so Morales is very much a charismatic uh, figure, and the masses' campaigns have been built around him. As I said, he has tended to fare much better than other members of the mass in elections. And so he has extensive coattails. He brings the rest of the mass along with him. And Evo's charisma lies in part with his sort of folksy, down-to-earth style, his blunt manner, which is, which is very much of a traditional populist. And the populists identify with the masses, with the pueblo. And that's very much what Evo does, and ordinary Bolivians identify with that. Like other populists, Morales has also used anti-establishment appeals uh, to court support. The traditional parties, by the early 2000s, had become very unpopular. And Evo capitalized on that by denouncing them, by criticizing them, by calling them corrupt and oligarchic institutions. Morales has also used the disenchantment with market-oriented policies that emerged over time in Bolivia, uh, and the resentment of U.S. intervention in Bolivia, of U.S.-sponsored coca eradication uh, campaigns, to build support. So he has used nationalist and state interventionist appeals uh, to also win support. Uh, uh, and so this sort of general populist approach has been a key part of what explains why Evo has won support, not only from indigenous people, but also among uh, many whites and mestizos. Uh, 
But, as I alluded to earlier, ethnopopulism has been not just a campaign strategy, it has also been a governing strategy. So in office he has implemented ethnopopulist policies, and those ethnopopulist policies have enabled him to consolidate the city. So what do I mean by this ethnopopulist policies? Well, one piece of it is very pro-indigenous policies, policies designed to benefit the indigenous population. Uh, now, some of these policies are not geared exclusively towards the indigenous population. Some of these policies focus on the poor more generally. But the fact is, in Bolivia, the indigenous population represents a disproportionate share <coughs> of the poor. So, in general, in Bolivia, indigenous people are very poor. And so policies designed to benefit the poor benefit the indigenous population. So what sorts of policies have, has Evo uh, implemented that benefit the poor? Agrarian reform policies. Uh, conditional cash transfer programs. Policies that make payments to families in order to get them to poor families in order to get them to keep their kids in school. Or policies, programs uh, that encourage pre- and postnatal visits on the part of poor women, uh, literacy campaigns. All of these types of programs have benefited the indigenous population of Bolivia extensively. Uh, the Morales administration has also, however, implemented policies directly aimed at the indigenous population. Policies, for example, that promote indigenous culture or that combat discrimination. Uh, the government, for example, has tightened laws against uh, racial discrimination in Bolivia. It has sought to expand the teaching of indigenous languages. Uh, it's, it's sought to expand the teaching of indigenous culture and history in the public schools. In addition, the Morales administration has pushed through a new constitution uh, that recognizes the important presence of indigenous people in Bolivia. So, for example, the new constitution recognizes the country as plurinational. It makes the indigenous banner one of the country's national symbols. It recognizes various indigenous tongues as official languages in Bolivia and requires that the central government and departmental governments use at least two official languages, that is, typically Spanish and one indigenous language. In addition, the new constitution granted the indigenous population various collective rights. This includes collective land ownership, the right to benefit from natural resources and indigenous territories, control over indigenous knowledge and practices, territorial autonomy, self-governance, the right to elect leaders, through traditional methods, the right to use traditional forms of justice in Bolivia. And finally, the new constitution has sought to ensure greater representation of the indigenous population in the halls of power. So according to the new constitution, for example, at least two of the members of the Supreme Electoral Tribunal and at least one of the members of the departmental electoral tribunals are supposed to be of indigenous or peasant origin. There's also legislative seats specifically for the indigenous population. And the new constitution calls for the president to respect the plurinational character and gender equity in the composition of the, of the cabinet. So ethnic policies have been very much, ethnically oriented policies have been very much on the agenda of the Morales administration. And that represents a huge change in the past in Bolivia, uh, where ethnic policies were generally not on, on the agenda of past presidents. However, just as with his campaign strategy, Evel has also used popular, employed populist policies uh, in office. And what do I mean by that? Um, 
Well, first of all, I want to note that the Morales administration has not been populist in every respect. As Jennifer alluded to earlier, it has differed from traditional populist regime in that its programs have typically been funded by tax revenues or foreign aid. That is, it is not engaged in massive deficit spending. It has not declared massive wage hikes uh, that bankrupt the treasury. It has accumulated substantial international reserves. In fact, the IMF recently declared that the Bolivian model uh, the economic policies under the Morales administration have been to its approval. Uh, this is the International Monetary Fund. Um, nevertheless, in a number of respects, the Morales administration has been populist. First of all, it has been highly personalist. It has sought to concentrate power in the person of Evo Morales. And this has involved undermining horizontal accountability by gaining control of various state institutions, including the legislature, the judiciary, the electoral tribunal. Evel has also very, been very concerned about maintaining power within the mass, within the mass of marginalize, marginalizing any potential challengers to his authority. Perhaps most importantly, he has also revised the Constitution to allow himself to run for re-election. Now, initially, initially, he had promised that he would only run once for re-election, uh, but he has since backtracked on that, and he is running again this year. Uh, and he has argued that because his first term was under the previous Constitution, that it didn't count. And so that he's only running for the election. <coughs> in fact, obviously, this is this will be his third term if he runs. I mean, if he wins, uh, which they're all by all indications he will. Second of all, the Morales administration has pursued a highly anti-establishment agenda, okay? attacking the traditional political economic. Establishment. Now, the ironic thing, of course, is now Morales is the political establishment to a degree, but that hasn't stopped him from attacking the previous political establishment. Uh, so he routinely denounces opposition leaders. Uh, he has used mass mobilizations and protests to try to intimidate them. He has sought to weaken the power of some of the departmental prefects by forcing them from office or by depriving them of revenues, tax revenues. Uh, he has also brought criminal charges against many of them, uh, including uh, most of the former presidents of Bolivia. So there's five former presidents that he's brought criminal charges against. Uh, in addition, Morales, the Morales administration and Morales himself has harshly criticized other establishment institutions including the media, the Catholic Church, the National Electoral the, tri the Tribunal, the Judiciary. Third and finally, even though Bordalis has maintained rather conservative fiscal policies and has amassed substantial, substantial international reserves, that does not mean that he has not pursued nationalist and state interventionist policies. In fact, he has. He has been nationalist in the sense that he has repeatedly attacked the United States for intervening in Bolivia. He has accused the United States of fomenting a coup, of trying to destabilize the country. He has expelled the Drug Enforcement Administration, the US ambassador from the country. Uh, he has also been highly nationalistic and highly state interventionist in that he's privatized numerous foreign-owned corporations. Uh, perhaps the Morales administration's most important economic reform to date was the so-called nationalization of the Bolivian natural gas industry, which obliged foreign companies to sell a majority of their shares to the Bolivian government and to negotiate new contracts uh, that dramatically increased the prices, royalties, taxes, and fees that they had to pay to the Bolivian government. 
know, these measures have bought considerable benefits to the Bolivian government, a huge inflow of resources. Um, uh, but they've been very nationalist and state interventionist um, in orientation. So in that respect, too, um, he has been uh, populist. Well, what does all of this mean in terms of an assessment of the Nordas administration? Um, first of all, as I alluded to earlier, uh, these policies have really allowed him to consolidate his power. Uh, they are a large part of the reason why Evo Morales is in a good position to win a third term in office. It has kept together this unwieldy coalition of rural indigenous people and urban mestizos okay, that a lot of people thought it wouldn't be possible uh, to maintain. Populist coalitions have traditionally been unstable. But Evo Morales has held this, held them together. Um, it is also true that these policies have brought economic and social progress to Bolivia. Bolivia has grown considerably under Evo Morales. Inflation has remained low. Poverty has declined. Inequality has declined. So there has been some, there have been some real social and economic benefits which we should not ignore in assessing in evaluating the moment. But there have also been some negatives. Um, clearly, political polarization has worsened during the Morales administration. The country is divided. Yes, Evo has support of the majority of the population, but a substantial minority uh, bitterly opposes him. Um, that minority is concentrated in the eastern part of the country, in the department of Santa Cruz and that's another smaller departments. Uh, but there are certainly opponents of Morales throughout the country. Um, uh, and as Jennifer alluded to earlier, even some of his former supporters now oppose him in part because of his populist policies and his personalism and concentration of power. Uh, finally, I would argue that in some respects, democracy liberal democracy, at least, has deteriorated under Morales. There has been a weak